Hello everybody, welcome to the Bean Bird Do channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I have so much I want to talk about. Um, we've had so much going on in our country lately that is causing you know, turmoil. We've had just two very big hurricanes come through here and that's just here in America. But I know globally there's so much going on. We have all this war going on um, in the Middle East and um, I, one of the things that has been on my mind is that the enemy uses opportunities like this and tragedies, and he tries to plant seeds into the heart and mind of people and saying that these things that happen are the true nature of God. You know, you have this horrible hurricane come through and flooding, and it's like Satan tries to put this thought that, that that's God right there. And then I think that that you know, makes people... Um, you know, turn away from the Lord or just think like, well, I don't want to serve the Lord if that's what he's like. But that's slanderous against God. That's not who God is. And mankind, when left to our own devices in an unredeemed heart, turns to the ways of evil. And sin and evil has consequences. And often we see those consequences, but they really are a result of the unredeemed heart or the nature of sin. It's not the nature of God. Now, God can provide for his people and he will provide for his people through any difficulty. We're not of this world. Our home is in heaven. But until then, we occupy here and we live here and we intercede and we pray. But the Lord is able to keep us and provide for us while we are in the world, fulfilling the work that he has for us. And one of the examples that I want to turn to to illustrate how the Lord provides for us in our unique situations is through 2 Kings chapter 4, where there is the Elisha talking with the widow and multiplying the oil. So I want to start by just reading the scripture as it is in its pure state, and then we'll talk about it a little bit more and have some application. Okay, so this is 2 Kings chapter 4, the widow's oil. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels at large for yourselves and for and from all your neighbors, even empty vessels, do not get a few. And you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons, and pour out into these vessels, and you shall set aside what is full. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing the vessels to her, and she poured. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not one vessel more. And the oil stopped. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live on the rest. So in the start of this, we see that this woman felt comfortable going to Elisha. Uh, people today, they often don't feel comfortable going to leaders, right? In this world that we live in, usually only special people can get to the important ones that are in charge. But here we see that she felt that she could freely go to Elijah with her problems, um, and whether they are big or small. And in the same way, we have access to our Heavenly Father for big things and small things. Everyone has access to the Father through Jesus. And that's something that we shouldn't take for granted. And so we should use those opportunities to pray and to speak to Him directly because that's something that we can do. So... The woman came to Elijah with her issue and he, you know, told her a way how to get through this difficulty. The Lord worked in this situation in a miraculous way. And one of the first things he asked her to do was to get into a private place with these vessels. You know, sometimes God does things in the private place that he doesn't do out in the open. There's no formula and God does things differently all the time. But there is a very special sweetness of our time with the Lord when we're in one-on-one -on -one private time in the secret place with Him. He's able to minister to our needs and speak wisdom into our hearts, and He can heal the lonely heart. 
and we can experience the Lord and to know Him better. And the more we know Him, the more we can um, share Him with others and uh, walk in His goodness. And so God took what the widow had left, and He asked her to gather the empty vessels from the neighborhood, and all different sizes of vessels. And this can represent that there's different, you know, as the vessels were filled and they were all different, there's different kinds of people. We are vessels that can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can be a small child filled with the Spirit, or you could be an adult. You can be um, a weak person, or you could be a strong person. But the Holy Spirit fills the vessel. And we want to come available. And when we come available and empty, the Lord can fill us with His Spirit. And when we're filled with the Spirit, that's when we experience the things that are the fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience. And so the Lord is a God of joy, and He's a God of love and truth and all things that are good. His provision is always on time, and it's always exactly what we need. He doesn't give us too much or too little or too early or too late. And because He's God and He's sovereign, He knows exactly how and when to do it. And so the Lord uh, wants to work in our lives in a physical way, but He also wants to work in our lives in a spiritual way. He wants to have our heart aligned with Him. He wants us to know who He is and who His nature is, and then He wants us to walk with Him in obedience. You know, the Word says that when we love God, we obey His commandments. And in the study we just did, we learned that Christians obey the Lord because we love Him, and we love His law, we love His His ways, we love who He is, we love the Word. And we read the Word because we, um, we love it. And so um, God wants to always forgive us of our sins, and He wants us to be able to come to Him no matter our state, just to come before Him because He's willing. And so... God wants to reveal himself to us. And he also has, um, you know, there's testimonies of the ways that God works um, in people through these disasters. Recently, I was at a woman's Bible study, and one of the ladies there shared a testimony of this Asheville disaster that happened. Hurricane came through, and there was, you know, historical flooding that took place there. And there was a neighborhood that was blocked in because the only bridge out had collapsed in the flooding. And so that neighborhood was stranded in this location. and They couldn't get out with their cars. Well, it's not an accident, but the Lord had provided. It happened to be that one of the people in the neighborhood a couple years back had had professional plans drawn to rebuild that bridge and to replace it. And They remembered that they had these plans, and so they had pulled them out from their wherever they had stored them. And together, the neighborhood all came together, and they rebuilt the bridge according to those plans. And they worked together, and in the end, they were all able to drive out on that bridge. And so this is an example of how God knew what was going to happen before it happened, and He provided those plans uh, for those people in advance and they had them to be able to get out in that time. I also heard another testimony of a woman in Florida who was expecting a lot of flooding and she was concerned about her garden and all these seedlings that she had just planted. She thought it was all going to go to waste. But she prayed and she interceded for others who were also in Florida and in the morning Her flowers were still blooming, and not one of her seedlings was lost. Now, her not losing a seedling of her garden, that would be like maybe a small thing because there's people that, you know, have their whole homes protected from like the roof being ripped off. But I think it shows the tender nature of God that she prayed and she didn't even lose a seedling from her garden. I mean, how beautiful is that? Um, There's so many testimonies about people in Israel that have been supernaturally protected from bomb shrapnel or um, bombs landing and not destroying homes or bombs landing and not going off at all, not detonating. Um, We just see the hand of God in so many ways in 
these difficult things. And when you're walking with the Lord, you're under His protection. And we can trust that nothing happens to us that He doesn't allow because He's with us and He's for us and He has good things for us. And when we are walking in His ways, it does help us feel an inner confidence that we're aligned with His will. Sin, unfortunately, does have consequences, and just because we bear the consequences of sin doesn't mean that we're not forgiven. Um, It's just a natural thing that happens, is if you sin, you have to walk through the consequences. But the Lord is faithful to forgive us when we do sin. But the big point that I really want to stress on here is that mankind left to his own devices, um, the unredeemed heart, just leads to sin and disorder and pain. But the Lord doesn't want us to live that way. He wants us to have a new heart and to seek after Him where we can have lives that are rich and and blessed and bountiful. And we don't want to identify man's nature and call it God's nature. Um, I think that that's just one of the things that the enemy is doing today is... um, pointing that out. And that's why a couple days ago I did a video about who is man. And a lot of man's human nature is hard to listen to, honestly. It's hard to really like um, hear all the negative things that are associated with the unredeemed heart. But it's important that we do know those things so that we can understand what we're saved from. And also so we can distinguish the difference between man's unredeemed nature and God's nature. And that when He redeems us, He gives us a new heart and He gives us a new nature. And so we can walk in that freedom and joy that He has for us. And we can know that whatever comes, you know, disaster that's next or war that's next, that the Lord is capable and willing to provide for us and protect us in our situation very specifically. He's faithful and He is just and He sees you, and He hears you when you pray. And when you pray for others, that's very special to Him as well. So I hope that that encourages everyone. Um, And yeah, I guess that's it for today. And I will see you all later. Thanks.